God, your health is double, double.
Our God is good, amen. We bless the Lord for such a beautiful day. When our praises go up, His glory comes down. How many of you believe that? You choose to believe that this morning. We are going to sing a song that says Shekinah glory. We are going to call upon the glory of the Lord to come and dwell in our midst. The Shekinah glory that you can touch. The Shekinah glory that can change where no man can change. The Shekinah glory that can touch where no man can touch. How many of you believe that we serve a God whose hand is not too short to touch? How many of you believe that we serve a healer? How many of you believe that we serve a deliverer? A protector? Oh, Jesus Christ. We give you glory, Jesus, because you deserve it. We praise you, Jesus, because you deserve it. Oh God, we wait for you. Yes, we do, Jesus. We wait for you. We wait for you to walk in the room. Yes, Lord, we wait for you, Jesus. We wait for you. Shekinah glory, Shekinah 
shall flow living waters out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water Amen. I believe Jesus out of my belly shall flow rivers of healing I know. yes Jesus ah yes Jesus oh Holy Spirit Yeah. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of my belly shall flow. Yeah. Rivers of living water, yeah, yeah, yeah. out of my belly, out of my belly, shall flow today, shall flow. This is a testament that we are, we believe in the return of Jesus Christ. If it were not so, we would not be required to do this. Amen. But the Bible says that do it in remembrance of me until I return. Amen. So every Christian who has been called by the Lord. Whenever you, take up, uh, uh, whenever you partake of this Holy Communion, you are proclaiming, but also testifying that Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. If it were not so, we would not be required to do this. But he told us that every often, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. Amen. Welcome, man of God. Amen. So, um, the Lord is the supper. In the first Corinthians chapter 11, the Lord is the supper. One of the commands. Um, verse 23 of first Corinthians 11. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord, the Lord Jesus the same night which he was betrayed, 
took bread as we are taking the bread i hope all of us are, have, have the holy communion elements and when he had given thanks he, we give thanks amen when he had given thanks he, he broke it and said take and eat amen when you get it and the, the man of god tells you to eat eat when you get it and you are commanded to eat take and eat the lord told them take eat this is my body which is broken for you and do it in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had he had supped saying this cup is the new cup covenant in my blood do it also as often as you do it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you show the lord is death until he comes as often as you t- you eat this bread and partake of this blood of this cup you proclaim the return of the lord jesus christ and also proclaim the death of christ until he comes amen father we thank you for greater love has no man than this that he should lay down his life for his friends we thank you because we are not your servants as your word says that you no longer call us servants but you have called us friends and children father we thank you now lord as we partake of this bread take your bread may we heal be healed lord may questions be answered may tears be wiped away may burdens be lifted may yokes be broken in jesus name take the bread prayerfully the same manner after he had, they had eaten he took the cup and gave to them to drink and told them this is my blood poured out for you for the remission of sins and do this as often as you can in remembrance of me and as a testimony for my death until I come May we take the cup. Father, we thank you for the blood. The blood of Jesus that speaks a better language than the blood of Abel which accuses. May all accusations against us be destroyed in Jesus' name. May all altars that have been erected to oppose our destiny, to oppose our progress spiritually, and in every other area be destroyed even as we partake of this cup of the blood of Jesus which pleads for us in Jesus name amen take the cup take some few min- a few seconds a few minutes a minute or seconds give thanks to god give thanks to the father we can never thank you lord we can never thank god enough for the gift of the blood of jesus for his body imagine what you would be and where you would be if it were not for this blood today so there is a gentleman stand up and let's all come the ministry of the word Clap for the man of God, clap, clap your hands, celebrate. Let's give a hand clap to Jesus. Hallelujah!
We bless your name. We glorify your name. You are holy. You are high and lifted up. There is none like you. You are above all. Give a mighty shout of triumph. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. I almost feel like... has already finished the sermon. Someone is getting married, you are there single, why are you not clapping? Hallelujah. Singles, I'm not hearing you clapping. Can I hear you clapping? Yes. We had a testimony uh, a testimony here last Last week, our sister is uh, en route to Karamoja, a new job, a new life. So, if you don't have a job, why are you not clapping? Can you clap your hands? We have uh, Donam. Donam, come quickly, 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 quickly. Donam gave her testimony of serving the Lord and uh, in an instant God put her on a plane and he took her to outside countries. If you haven't stepped on a plane, why are you not clapping? Why this? Ah, you people are... Why are you not clapping? I see people are... <laughs> Donna, welcome back. Welcome back. And thank you for coming back. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, some of you, God is protecting you from, from backsliding. But Donna, when she has come back, hallelujah. Yes. Even you, if you are going to come back, you clap your hands. Clap your hands. I think my sermon is, is done. It's done. God is good. God is repositioning us. Hallelujah. And it is already happening. So many testimonies. People are changing jobs. People are moving house. People. So, if for you, you are still waiting to be repositioned, clap your hands to the Lord. <laughs> clap your hands to the Lord. Now, we've been on this journey of repositioning and we've been studying the word um, because it's good to study the word, hallelujah. And that is why we have weekly Bible study. I Tuesday. Yes, be there. Be there if you if you if you know the longest name in the Bible, maybe you can stay away. If you know the people who went to heaven without dying, yeah, maybe you can stay away. If you know the first car in the Bible, because I was very confident, she said, I know the longest name, I know what, uh huh, the first car. No. Okay, clap for her, it's good to clap for her. Yeah, always encourage them. Clap, clap for her. Yes. At least she tried. But the answer is wrong. Sorry. So if you know all those, then you can stay away. But if at all you don't know them, then make sure Tuesday you are there for Bible study. We've been looking at the theme for the year, divine repositioning. And seeing that God, when he starts to reposition you, he gives you a dream. He tells you something in secret. My brother, my sister, I'm calling you for this. And that's why God has been raining down dreams, dreams. People have been coming to me. There's a, 
a, a brother who, who came, he said, Doctor, I have to talk to you. I said, hey, but I'm, I'm really tired, I'm exhausted. I, he said, no, I have to tell you, I had a dream. And he told me his dream. And for sure, the dream was heavy. The dream had mountains, had rivers, had... Ah. So God has been speaking to you, dreams, dreams. What are your dreams? Ask your neighbor, what are your dreams? What have you been dreaming? Brother Tony, who you saw dancing, was he dancing very well? I'm the one who taught him those, those strokes. So, and those of you who don't know how to dance, why are you not clapping your hands? Clap your hands. Yes? We said that envy, jealousy, we kick it out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You don't know how to dance, just clap your hands. Clap your hands. Yes. I saw some of you are watching the video saying, hmm, hmm, hmm. We rebuke that spirit, yes? Receive, yes. Say, mine will be like that, or even better. Hallelujah. Now, I, I expected people to be writing, taking notes. Okay, this is how you start, this is how you do what, this is what. Instead, people are just, yes. When God gets ready to reposition you, he gives you dreams. And so, I'm here to tell you that your dreams shall come to pass. Your dreams shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Your dreams, those visions shall come to pass. And we said it is not for the old or the young, it is for everyone. Joseph was a young man, but he got a dream. Abraham was an old man, an old man who was finished. Yes? Genesis 12. Finished. He had done, he lived his life. He was done. Isn't he the one who called himself a dead, a dead, he said a dead man or a dead dog? It was a man, dead man or dead? You see, you need to go for Bible study. Just gambling. Gambling with God's word. Can you imagine? You say, I'm born again. Me, I'm born again. In census. In census, what did you put? Eh? Born again. Born again. So it is not for only the young. We saw Joseph was young. Youngest of the brothers. Except his brother, other brother, Benjamin. Abraham, an old man. So he said, elders, your dreams shall come to pass. Elder, come here, your dreams shall come to pass. Ah, I get so excited when I look at you and I see what God is preparing for you. CK, I get so excited. Actually, we, we got scared last Sunday. We got scared because the words God was bringing, it was like what he's preparing for CK is going to be so massive, so big, so incredible that God was just saying, please, you know, make sure you don't eh, get carried away. We start with a dream. And so Joseph starts speaking his dream because you must speak your dream. The Bible says, with the heart one believes, but with the mouth one speaks. In the beginning was the word, and, and the word was with God, and, and it said it was, God's spirit was hovering over the water. And then it says, God said, you must speak your dream. That is why we say, oh, you're getting married, tell us. You know, important things in life, you have to speak. It is like that. I'm sorry. Some of you say, me, I'm an introvert, I don't talk, I'm quiet. I'm sorry, some time comes you have to speak. God has called you to sing, the time has to come, and you sing. You stand up and speak your dream. That's why we announce every Thursday, if God has called you for music, worship, please come. Some of you, we've called you for the whole year. You're just there refusing. Peace. Stand up. 
peace was, was like that. A quiet person. In fact, for us, we didn't even know that she knows how to sing. Can you imagine? We would invite her, she would just come and attend. A, a, a what? A, at bench warmer. And, and that's not bad. Yes? It's not bad to be a bench warmer for like two weeks. I can allow you two weeks. That is why we celebrate. Well, that's why we say first time visitors. Yes? We celebrate our first time visitors. There were some first time visitors. Just stand up again and we see you. Our first time visitors. Ha. Look at this serious. Uh, clap for them. Eh, eh? We welcome you. We bless you. Let's stretch our hands towards all these people right now. We're going to prophesy over you. We're going to say that the troubles you have faced this whole year, you shall never face again. You are going to triumph over everything the enemy has pushed against you. You are going to overcome your dreams that you've been praying about, asking God for the last 20 years. This year, they shall come to pass. This year, you shall construct the house. This year, you shall acquire land. This year, you will get out of debt. This year, you will finish that loan. You will be free. You will develop. You will be established in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can sit down. So some of you acquired like peace. Then one day, it was in worship. Someone was standing next to her and she somehow, I don't know how, opened her mouth. After keeping quiet for like two months, she opened her mouth. Tell your neighbor, open your mouth. Speak. And we heard a voice like an angel. We said, who is that? Who is that? Quiet. You couldn't see. It took us another month to find out who it was. Am I lying? She just kept quiet. Someone told us, it is peace. She's called peace. Then we told her, okay, peace, come and sing. She refused. She said, me, I don't sing. This peace. Peace, you come. These people think maybe I'm lying. You come and tell us. You come. She said, me, I don't sing. Yes. Say hello to these wonderful people. Praise the Lord, Church. A blessed good afternoon to all of you. I'm happy to see you. Take me to the King. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn to pieces, it's my offering. Lay me at the cross and leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing for you this song please take me to the king Amen. if you can if you can't sing clap your hands but if you can sing clap your hands hallelujah hallelujah whoa, whoa. Was I deceiving? No. Why were you refusing to, to sing? I just thought it wasn't the right time. Mm. That's deep, that's deep. Clap for her, clap for her. You must open your mouth to speak. But when you open your mouth to speak, Sometimes you also have to be careful who you tell your dream. Joseph told his dream to some people who he thought were 
too, too close to him. And the moment you share your dream, you can expect envy and jealousy. That is why Jesus said, blessed are you if you're not offended in me. Have you ever read such a scripture? Blessed are you. Someone else declaring their dream, it can easily make you get offended. Someone says, I'm going to get married. You get offended. Someone says, I'm going to travel. You get offended. And jealousy grips your heart. Envy grips your heart. And we looked at several scriptures telling us to repent. And we told ourselves, repent. Tell your neighbor, repent. If you feel jealous, anyway, let me, let me not go deep in that because we must move on. But beware of jealousy and envy. Yes? So, Joseph tells his dream to the wrong people. He thought they were the right people, but they were the wrong people. But if he had not shared his dream, it would not have started the process of his divine repositioning. It is sharing his dream that set things in motion. You must share your dream. Speak the vision. Speak it out. Jealousy and envy grabs his brothers and they say, here is this dreamer. Let us kill him. Genesis chapter 37 verse 18. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. And we said, why envy and jealousy is so dangerous? Because from envy and jealousy, the next step is murder. And it is murder, either physical murder or, and we said, envy, jealousy. It happened to believers, but it doesn't happen. And then we started debating which group is affected the most. Is it the choir? Is it the intercessors? Remember some discussion around that. You have a prayer meeting and the prayer meeting is about sister so and so, brother so and so. Hmm? Brethren, we have to pray. Remember the other brother who stood there that is going to join choir. Let me tell you about him. And they start poo, 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 hitting him. And some of you are moving and you are, you are actually dead. You, they have killed you even before you came. You are already dead. When you say, I want to be in this ministry, already be, say, no, we don't need dead people in, in, this, in this ministry. You say, can I be an usher? No, please. Don't worry. You have already been killed. Yes, but you don't know. All this starts in, in motion, a process that ended with Joseph in a pit. Character assassination can push you into a pit. Sharing your dream can put you in a pit. And we said, what is, the, what is the big thing in a pit? The first thing is, you are alone. And some of you have shared your dream. You have taken big steps. And suddenly you find yourself in a pit. Your friends cut off. Your family rejected you. Even the job, there's a sister who told me, the boss just said, this is what I need you to do in this job. If you can't do that, you leave. They said, I'm a Christian, I can't do it. They said, please, leave. Why did Joseph end up in a pit? He had to learn how to be alone. And we said, some of you need to learn how to be alone. Not jumping from friendship to friendship, relationship to relationship. God wants you alone because it is when you are alone that God can speak to you. Some of you, you need to, and you see these days, it's even hard to detect that someone is alone. They might be alone in their room. So these days, I, 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 when I patrol my, my house, my house is now full of a lot of people. When we started with Honorable, it was uh, the two of us and Jesus. Hmm? Any, now, any noise I would hear, I know this is now something wrong. Yes? But these days, it is terrible. 
I see big people moving in my home. I get scared. I run. I find it's, it's my son going to check some. F- these, these big men. Freedom. Freedom, stand up. Around one at night, the man can patrol and, and see what is happening in the kitchen. If there's a I don't know what they do there, him and the, the other big brother, always at night monitoring the kitchen, monitoring it. God bless you, Freedom. God bless you. Maybe you know what they're looking for. Me, I don't know. But I get scared. I jump up. And sometimes even, even if they are alone in the room, I hear a lot of conversation. They're talking, talking, talking. So I, I come in and they're like, who are you talking to? He says, ah, no, I'm talking to Keza. I'm talking to... Ah, how? All these people, but they're, they're connected. I don't know how they connect. Keza, freedom, I don't know who. The whole night chatting, what, discussing, I don't know what. Elder, Elder uh, Musisi, maybe you can help me. <laughs> what are they discussing? Sometimes God wants you alone. You are in your room alone, but you're not alone. You're talking, chatting. And freedom knows. Sometimes I will say, enough. Bring your phone, bring your gadget, everything. Read a book. Read the Bible. Some of you, God has cut off your friends, cut off your work, and maybe even cut off your phone. Your screen has cracked. You think it's the devil. It is God trying to get you alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Network is off. God wants you alone so that he can talk to you in the pit alone with God. Jesus often went alone to a high place, to a boat, to a a garden, the garden of Gethsemane, to be alone with God. If you want to God to reposition you, you need to get time alone. So, in the quiet place, there is revelation. In the quiet place, there is renewal. Yesterday, someone came and told me, said, Doctor, me, I don't know, these days I cannot even pray. It has been two weeks, I have not prayed. That is a clear indication someone needs to be in a pit alone with God. Now, verse 26. Judah, take note of that. Judah. Judah. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he's our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers are great. So when the Ishmaelites who were Midianite traders came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern and sold him for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Sometime later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the cistern. When he discovered that Joseph was missing, he tore his clothes in grief. God called us to, to call our child freedom. To represent God's breakthrough and breakout from slavery. God bless you, Moses. May you receive breakthrough this year. May you receive breakthrough this year. Freedom from slavery. Freedom from limits. In Jesus' name. He got it. He was sold for financial gain. That is slavery. There was a young person who came complaining to me that, Doctor, the place I work, the place has no windows. Hmm? <laughs> they work the whole day in a place that has no windows. And they have to make, they tell them, you have to make phone calls. 200 phone calls every day, calling people. I said, of course, that is uh, what they have to do. Because they are trying to benefit from you. Financially, hmm? if, if they give you a nice seat like the seat they have given us elders with an open place, how will they make money off you? 
So slavery represents that kind of situation where someone is benefiting financially from you. You do work you don't want to do. You are not paid for what you are worth. That is slavery. Joseph was sold. I think they even put the amount. Let me see. 27 says what? 20 pieces of silver. I'm told this is around $20. 20 dollars these days is around uh, about 70k. Eh? For 70k they sold Joseph. Yeah. You don't get your worth. The other day I saw I saw uh, somewhere artists were beating up their fellow artist. And when they got them, they said, why are you beating this man that he made a show somewhere for 100k? And that, that's why they were beating him. Hmm? And the guy was saying, now I needed the money. They were like, no, you're the one spoiling the what? Spoiling the market for, for shows. How can you do a show for 100,000? Slavery. Joseph sold for 20 pieces. Turn with me to Matthew 26, 14. Matthew 26, 14. We're talking about slavery. It says, Then Jesus, Judas Iscariot, the other side it was Judah, here it's Judas. One of the twelve disciples went to the leading priest and asked, How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? I told you envy, jealousy, scheming, and murder. And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. Other man, 20, this one, 20 pieces. From that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity. There are people who are looking for an opportunity to betray you. What does it mean to be a slave? It means you are exhausted and tired, but you still have to go to work. It means you, you are tired of the children and food and school fees and what, but you have to keep pushing. Slavery affects the person who, who, who is being sold as a slave, but it also affects the people who sell you as a slave. And our pastor, Pastor Patience, who will be here next week, tell your neighbor, next week, Sunday, has written a whole book about how slavery, that spirit of slavery, has affected this whole continent and not just the whole continent it has affected every single person as long as that person is black and in one of the chapters page 298 do we have this the book table is not here make sure you get a copy she talks about psalm 109 verses 1 to 5 psalm 109 verses 1 to 5 the effect that slavery has on the people that sell others into slavery. Psalm 109, 1 to 5. It says, first of all, it starts with the cry of the person who has been sold as a slave. Oh God, whom I praise, don't stand silent and aloof while the wicked slander me. Remember character assassination. Yes, if you're part of that, be careful. And tell lies about me. That is how Joseph got into the whole thing. Verse 3, they surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations. Even as I'm praying for them, they repay evil for good and hatred for my love. Now, we see the curses. It says, get an evil person to turn against him. There's another translation. It says, set a wicked man over him as a judge. These are now the curses. The man is crying. So one of the things that affect those who send others in slavery is that wicked rulers are installed over them. That is one. Then it says, let his days be few. And let another take his 
place. You lose your position. Then it says, let his children be fatherless. Curses coming to those who, who engage in those things and send others into slavery. The person themselves is affected, yes. But even you who is sending, you're also affected. So, fatherlessness, widows, orphans. And this is affecting the whole people. Uganda has one of the highest levels of orphans. Yes? Refugees. It says, let his children be continuous vagabonds. Meaning, people just roaming around. And you look at, at, at this region and you see people are roaming. You meet someone, you're like, where are you from? He's like, well, actually I'm from Burundi. But then we had to run to Congo. Then we were in Congo, we, we connected, we crossed to Arua. I was in Arua, then I reached what? Just a katogo of people moving, wandering, becoming refugees. Shame and dishonor. It says, let the creditor and extortioner seize all that he has and let strangers plunder the fruits of his labor. Maybe for you, you've never experienced these kind of things. Where creditors come and carry everything. Maybe you've never experienced. Those who have, I want to tell you, it is this spirit of slavery. It says, may he cut off the memory, may their memory be cut off. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered. And let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let's go back to our story. Chapter 38. Suddenly, we're talking about another, a man called Judah. Do you remember him? Judah. It says, you, you remember Judah? He's the one who, who did what? Who came up with the whole strategy of slavery. About this time, Judah left home and moved to Adullam. Tell your neighbor, Adullam. Where he stayed with a man named Hira. Tell your neighbor, Hira. Yes. There he saw a Canaanite woman, the daughter of Shua, and he married her. When he slept with her, she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. He named the boy Er. Then she became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. She named him Onan. And when she gave birth to a third son, eh, so that was determined. She named him Shelah. At the time of Shelah's birth, they were living at Kezib. In the course of time, Judah arranged for his firstborn son, Er, to marry a young woman named Tamar. Tell your neighbor, Tamar. But Er was a wicked man in the Lord's sight, so the Lord took his life. Then Judah said to us, brother Onan, okay, Kali, your brother has died. Hey, Tofa, you. you marry Tamar. You must produce children for your brother. Ah, Onan said, <laughs> the woman who killed my brother, now you also want me to, to go there. But Onan was not willing to have a child who would not be his own heir. So there's something Onan did, which I may not get into in detail. But it was, verse 10, the Lord considered it evil. Whatever Onan did was evil. So the Lord took Onan's life. Now, so to, 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 verse 12. Some years later, Judah's wife died. His firstborn son died. The second, uh, then Onan, the second one, died. Then his wife died. Slavery. Curses from slavery hit Judah. And it went on, it went on. Uh, Tama was aware that Shelah had grown up. Remember, this is Tama, the the Namwandu who had lost two so far, but she still had a third one who was alive, so she was trying to see how to get out of that situation. Tama was aware that Chela had grown up, but no arrangements had been made for her to come and marry him. So she changed out of her widow's clothing, covered herself with a veil to disguise herself, then she sat beside the road at the entrance to the village of Enaim, which is on the road to Timna. Judah noticed her and thought she was a prostitute. 
since she had covered her face. So he stopped and propositioned to her. Judah. Judah. Remember the other man? One son, another son, third son. What? Ah. Now he's roaming the streets, those places. He said, now, let me have sex with you. Not realizing that it was his own daughter-in-law. How much will you pay me? Ah. They were both d- dangerous people. Eh? She also knew how much. Hmm? They start negotiating. Now, it says, Judah promised. That he see now, Saint. Hmm? Let's do this thing eh? on credit. Can you imagine? Not only as he is now on the street trying to, to look for eh? Nataina Saint. He's broke and he is putting slavery. It brings you down, down. Hmm? So she says, okay, what kind of guarantee do you want? Okay, she says, okay, Kale, it's okay. But how do I know? Security. Hmm? Put your national ID. Yes, that's what it says here. It says, leave me your ID. Seal. So the man leaves his national ID with the girl and the walking stick meaning he was already eh, is a e, talking to a young girl he get, had intercourse with her she became pregnant mm. she disappeared now later judah asked his friend hira the adulamite to take the payment hmm? remember the payment to the woman so hira couldn't find her Verse 21, he asked the men who lived there, where can I find the, 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 there was some woman, a, a prostitute. Ah, ah, no, 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 just someone here, someone. You're looking for a prostitute? No, no, just there was someone who, who usually sits here. They said, we've never seen such a person here. He went back and he told him that you can't find her. Then let her keep the things, his national ID his walking stick. He says, if we continue, uh, we will make ourselves a laughing stock. As if they were not already a laughing stock. Slavery brought Judah down. This is the same Judah who we talk about. Praise Judah and all that. The Lion of Judah. This is Judah. A man of God. A Lion of Israel and all that. But he sold people into slavery. And this is how he ended up. Death of his children. Death of his wife. Sexual immorality. You sleep with your daughter-in-law when you don't know. Looking for a prostitute who you can't find. He loses his identity, who he is. And some of you, that is what has happened. You are kings and princes on this earth. I always tell my children, stand straight. You are a child of the Most High. But because of what you've gone through, the pit, the slavery, even you don't stand straight. You are bent over. God is saying, stand straight, mighty woman of God. Stand straight, man of God. Stand straight. We are going to pray. Jesus was sold as a slave. 20 pieces of silver, Jesus, 30 pieces of silver. He was character assassinated. They said he's trying to start a riot. He's trying to start a rebellion. He is, he, is, he is worse than a murderer. That's what they said. Because they said, give us Barabbas. Can I have someone on the, on the keyboard? Psalm 109, 31. Jesus suffered the same thing like Joseph suffered. So that he could carry that same burden and understanding of being a slave, sold for money, working for money, money that is not enough. Joseph suffered, but even Judah suffered. And some of us in our countries were suffering not even because of anything we did, but maybe somewhere people sold us into slavery. That's why we're talking about corruption. Corruption is someone selling others into slavery. Taking money that has to be paid back. 
paid back by who? By you. By your children. But I want to tell you, Jesus said, come unto me, all those who labor, all those who are carrying heavy burdens. When Jesus hung on that cross and he said, it is finished, he had paid the price to overcome the curses of slavery. He had paid the price for us to be set free. That's why he says, come to me, all those who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In a minute, we're going to just cry out to the Lord to break every chain of slavery, to break every limitation of slavery, to break even any damage to our identity where we have forgotten who we are. Psalm 109 verse 31. For he stands beside the needy, ready to save them from those who condemn them. People may character assassinate and you don't have anyone to stand for you. Jesus is saying, I am here. I will stand for you. I will speak for you. Let's just start praying right now. God sent you, allowed you to go into the pit, allowed you to go into slavery, but I'm here to declare it is time to come out. It is time to come out. It is time to, to reposition you out of the pit, out of slavery. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for breaking us free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, I hear the chains falling. Oh, I hear the chains falling. Come on, go ahead and break every chain in your life that has been limiting you. Every kind of distress, every kind of depression, every kind of poverty. Every chain of sickness, we speak to you to break right now. Every chain of sickness, diabetes, break right now. Break right now. High blood pressure, break right now. Cancer, break right now. 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 Every virus, break right now. HIV, break right now. Break right now. Every chain of debt. Yes. Every loan, yes. rent payment, yes. break right now, break, break right Jesus. now, every financial bondage, every financial Jesus. limitation, yes. break right now, break Jesus. right now, break right now, break right now, break right now, break right now. Break right now. Break right now. Break right now. 
God will heal you. You have struggled with that sickness for the last 30 years. God is going to heal you. It will come to pass. On Tuesday, come for Bible study. On Thursday, if you are called for the music ministry, join us. On Friday, join the youth. Whatever it is you can do, you do that. You may not have to do all of the things, but the one you can do, you do it. Let us stand for the words of the blessing. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of CNC Buziga with this special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen, 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 amen. amen.